Hi, and welcome to the Count to 10 podcast. My name is Simon Sanborn, and I'm a behavior-focused teacher, and I started this podcast as a little tool to help out my co-teachers and thing, people that I kind of worked with and some of the things that I found that work great with helping students who have behavior disorders kind of function in a, in a general education classroom. Um, and then, you know, general education teachers deal with behaviors all the time. So um, instead of uh, writing all these ideas down and sending them out, I thought I would just do it in a really quick podcast type form, I guess. So um, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Today uh, shouldn't be too long. Um, you know, I'm a little sorry for the hiatus. I didn't do a podcast for the last couple of weeks because we had spring break. So I was on spring break for one of them. And the Friday before that, I was ready to leave for spring break. So uh, I didn't have one. So uh, sorry about the hiatus. But I think we all need a break, right? And that's good, even for my ideas. My wife talks about that a lot, saying, man, I just need a break from thinking about my mental health all the time. You know, am I meditating enough? Am I being aware enough? And that can be exhausting. So sometimes it's good to take a break and not have to listen to people's ideas of what they can do to help. So um, this book here, it's called Wired for Love. Um, it's by Stan Tatkin. And my wife and I are always trying to work on our relationship. We're always trying to be better communicators, you know, if you really love and care about somebody, you want to be the best version of yourself for them, right? So we do these things to be the best version of ourselves for each other. And uh, it's really working well. We keep, you know, we laugh about things. We, uh, you know, don't take things as seriously as we used to. Um, over spring break, I was I finished a book called the, uh, oh, shoot, I knew I was going to forget it. It's called the... Um, Four Agreements. And uh, it's a very good book, very popular book. And the Four Agreements are, are really awesome tools. And once you have like these four basic rules, then you can start finding all these nuances inside those rules. You know, so like uh, the first one is be, um, you know, be true to your word. You know, stand behind your word. Make sure the things that you're saying are truthful and honest. You're not gossiping. You're not causing more problems or more drama. Um, and if you think if you just take that rule and you start applying it to the way you speak to just say your spouse, um, you start thinking about, am I saying this because I want to get information across? Okay, then am I saying this? Is this going to come across as a hurtful thing? Do I have to say this in a different way? Should I just being thoughtful and conscious about how you're interacting with somebody? Because communication is the transfer of knowledge, and if we're throwing in a bunch of extra stuff because uh, along with that transfer of knowledge, we want that person to know that we're suffering or we want to make them suffer a little bit or poke at them a little bit. Um, so some of these tools are just better ways overall for my wife and I to communicate. We've communicate differently with our kids now, it seems like. So um, all these things are tools. So even though this is a tool that I'm using right now with my wife, um, it's a tool that you can use too. And I will associate it with uh, kids and teaching. So I thought I would just, you know how much I love this brain stuff. So in this book, they define two different aspects of people, okay? They call, we all have uh, the primitives, okay? So sorry, I misspoke. It's not about uh, two aspects of people. It's everybody has these two aspects, okay? So the first one is called the primitives. And the primitives, what they are, they are just like our functioning body, right? So our, in our brain, our amygdala, um, you know, picks up threats and signals. And this is right out of the book. Uh, the hippocampus, right, releases chemicals to the brain, gives instructions uh, for stress, you know, really stress uh, hormones. Uh, the pituitary and the adrenaline glands, so they, they, you know, they're the ones who receive commands from the hippocampus to release those chemicals. And then the dorsal or modal, uh, motor vagal complex, they call it the dumb vagus, I don't know what that means, uh, but it's what reacts to danger and stress, and it slows down your cardiovascular system. So all these things just happen. Right, something goes, something triggers you. You see something, uh, and this, and these things can be for good and for bad, right? But if you're in the heated argument, these are the things that fire off right away, and you don't have any control over them. Okay, it's like breathing or your heart beating. It's just things that happen, and this kept us alive, right? You're listening to this because you had an ancestor who was pretty awesome, and you're here because of what they've learned and all the knowledge they gained over time as they evolved. So. These things are for a reason. We just got to become aware of them, okay? Uh, all right, so those are the primitives, right? Things we can't control. The other thing are the ambassadors, okay? So the ambassadors are the ventral vagal complex or the smart vagus. You know, I don't like the words dumb and smart, but uh, this is medicine. 
<laughs> the hippocampus, all right, so it handles short-term and long-term memory and controls the stress hormones. Insula, okay, provides awareness of internal body cues. So the insula is what gives us like that gut feeling um, or knowing something's kind of off and we're not sure why, that's the insula. So isn't that kind of amazing that that gut feeling or something being off is a real physical trigger for your body for you to be able to survive. It's pretty astounding that these things are built into our brains, even though they could be a pain in the butt. Uh, obviously the right and left brains, right? They wanna make that uh, obvious. And then the orbital frontal cortex serves as the moral and empathetic center, communicates with all the ambassadors and the primitives. Okay, so the frontal cortex of our brain is what is going, if we become aware and we become good at using the tools we're gonna to talk about, then you'll be able to gain some control. I'm getting that gut feeling. What does that mean? What's going on? What am I thinking about? Gets you to be present in the moment, kind of understand things. Then you can be, you know, when the stressful things are happening, somebody's screaming and yelling. Um, instead of all your, you know, instead of your fight or flight kicking off, you can be like, okay, I can feel my heart racing. Um, I know this isn't a good spot to be in. What can I do to, to be out of here? Or can I remove myself in a good way? That kind of thing. So I know those things are a lot easily uh, easier said than done, but I think that just understanding some of this stuff gives me a break for myself. So instead of being, you know, um, if my son and I are having a discussion about something and he says something that really upsets me and like, you know, really ticks me off, um, Instead of me going off and shaming him or yelling and screaming and, or, or doing all the communication things that I shouldn't be communicating, like none of that stuff matters. Um, it's more about what I want him to learn and understand. So it helps me slow that stuff down when I understand it better. So when I get that gut feeling or I feel my temperature rise or my mouth gets dry or whatever it is, I'm like, oh man, here we go. Okay, I know what's going on. Okay, take some deep breaths. Let's get ourselves centered right here. You're in this chair, that's your son across from you. You are Simon, you're gonna be okay. What do we need to focus on? That kind of stuff is real and it works. So um, I like sharing that. So lastly, what I thought I would do is give you an example right out of the book again about these. This is again about relationships with a man and a woman. This could absolutely be the same thing with a teacher and a child, a student or a mother and a, and a child. All these things are totally applicable. It is just the way you talk to each other. Um, or at least one person trying to make this be something that how they speak. So here's an example first of primitives talking to primitives. This is a husband and wife. All right, husband, bo sorry, wife, bordering on whining. There's nothing for me to eat here. Uh, the husband, I'm getting a steak. Why do you always have to be so fussy? Uh, the wife, what? Now you want me to break my diet? And the husband, did I say that? What's wrong with one of the salads? Put on your glasses and reread the menu again. So. We could all kind of pick up on <laughs> how crappy that is. All right, so here's, a, here's the perfect one. This is the ambassadors talking with the ambassadors, okay? So, and if you think about it, you're gonna to listen to this and go, okay, of course, it's so simple. I get it, I get it. So first, um, wife, it looks like I might have to go with one of the side salads if I wanna stay on my diet. Husband, are you okay with that? Maybe we should go somewhere else. Wife, thanks for offering, but no. I'm just drooling because there's so much here I can't have. Husband, that's a bummer. I hope I, I hope I don't make you drool more when I order a steak. Okay. You know, I again I don't want to seem too naive by saying that that's obviously a perfect scenario, and we would all love to communicate like that. Uh, but you know what? Be really good to yourself and compassionate. It takes a lot of time, and I think it takes. I mean. I don't do it great all the time. You know, I don't communicate like I should. I don't communicate with my students sometimes like I should. I don't communicate with my associates sometimes. Um, we're always working on being better about this stuff. So never beat yourself up about, oh, I can't do this or I can't do that. Um, it's This is just the way it's supposed to be. And you have to take your time to grow, to be able to communicate the way you want to. I only think like I've got, I feel like every six months I look back and I go, man, I'm so much better at this than I was like six months ago. I feel like I've made steps like that when it comes to my thinking and how I communicate. And I'm 50, actually I'll be 51 in about two weeks. But because I, I've been around for a while and I'm just now understanding myself enough and I'm just not sure that life is supposed to be anything else than that. When you're 25 years old, you're supposed to be unsure and all over the place and uncertain, right? But if we can have communication with each other that stems from 
I want to get something across to you. So if that thing to get across to you is I'm very upset and angry with you, that would be best by saying I'm really upset and angry. I said this and asked for this and then you didn't follow through and I'm very sad and very upset about it, right? Right to the point. Instead of, oh my God, do we have to go to your parents' house this weekend? I do not feel like going there, you know? Why do I have to go? I don't want to do this. Well, if you could just do this, this, and this, and then like, I'm, you know, it's not centered on the thing that really matters, right? It's talking about a bunch of other stuff that doesn't do anything other than clog our vision or fog our vision. So being intentional with the way we talk about things, about what we need, you know, obviously that would be hard because it requires you to know what you need and it requires you to have a really good understanding of who you are and what you what you want. You know, like I said, my wife and I are just now getting better at this, about saying point blank things that we need, saying it in a way that the other person can say it, right? Um, I'll give you a solid example. My wife and I, you know, everybody loves talking about finances, right? Between their, with their, their couples. So um, she was like, hey, I really wanna talk about our summer break, or sorry, our spring break, and I really wanna talk about how we're gonna pay off our stuff and all this kind of thing. I said, sure. So she sat down and she said, I know this is that this stuff doesn't bother you as much as it bothers me. Um, I know that's that there's a benefit to that because you are thoughtful and you don't seem like you're stressed out by it. So you can see things a little clearer and that helps me. I am worried about A, B, and C. And I just want you to know that. And I just need to think I, we need to be careful about things. And I just want you to kind of understand where I was coming from, right? I didn't respond because I, sorry, I didn't respond right away because I was so caught off guard by the way she was talking to me and not caught off guard by the way that she's usually screaming and yelling at me. So I was surprised she was talking calm. It was more, I was so caught off guard because I was so instantly aware of what she was doing. I became a very, I mean, I, sub, I would say probably subconsciously, I became very, very actively listening to what she was saying. I became very aware of what her demeanor was and what she was saying to me and what she was trying to get across to me. This is what I want you to know, is this thing is bothering me and I want to find a solution and I know you have the ability to help me find it. That's like, I love you. You're my teammate. Help me be a better teammate because I know you're a great teammate and I want to be a great teammate too. So how can we make this work better, right? And I was all in. All in because I just didn't even question it. I was like, yes, whatever you want to do, I'll sit back and do whatever you want to do that makes you feel more comfortable about things. And I'll try to be more aware too. I'm not going to take on stress that I don't feel, but I can definitely give it some intentional looking at so that I can be as aware so you feel like I'm clued in and you feel and that makes you feel better. Done. Like it was just such a good conversation. It was just, I, it was so wonderful to, to hear her say that the way she did because it was like a perfect model for me. Perfect model. I was like, man, I just can't wait to have the next conversation with somebody and really be, you know, true with my word, with what I'm saying. You know, and that doesn't mean you can't have fun conversations and be silly. It just means if you're really wanting something or you really need something, how are you going to do the best job you can to get it? That's what it comes down to. Screaming and yelling at somebody, why don't we just have a conversation? I love you. I care about you. I want to be better. I know you want to be better. Let's do this. You know? So anyways, again, it is called Wired for Love. It's by Stan Tatkin. I hope I said that right. T-A-T-K-I-N. Um, and it's just awesome. You know, I just love these books that give you tools, right? I know people sometimes like, what's so great if you have a garage full of tools? Well, if I have a garage full of tools, then even if I only pick up that weird pair of pliers once every two or three years, it's right there when I need it. That's pretty fantastic. So I don't care about learning lots of tools. Um, things pop up in my head all the time. I fill it with all kinds of things. And then all of a sudden I'll be like, oh yeah, that's a good approach. I'll try that. And it just popped out of nowhere because I've been thinking so much about these things. But this is kind of my job as a teacher. That's it, folks. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know you take time out to listen to this and that means something to me. Um, and I hope that you get something from it. If you have any questions or any concerns or any ideas or know of any tools, please let me know. Um, you can contact me at Simon, S-Y-M-O-N, period, Sanborn, S-A-N-B-O-R-N, at gmail.com. And, you know, if you have constructive criticism for me, please let it go. 
I will listen to anything like that. Um, if it's just going to be crappy, then you can save it for somebody else who really like, would like to listen to that. Um, I'm here to see how I can get better, and I'm here to see how I can help others possibly get better. So um, if it's not going to be constructive, then it's just criticism, and I already criticized myself enough. So thanks so much for your time. Take care of each other and take care of yourselves. Have a good night.